the heartbeat. A rhythm. A collective vibration. It resonates through our villages. Our job is to connect with that heartbeat, to respond and engage. to respect our cultural institutions, but also to embrace what's new. It's our job to stay connected, to stay in touch, so no matter how you receive us and what you turn to us for, breaking news, important advisories, interesting stories, to get a good laugh, a good cry, or figure out where to eat, drink, shop, or play, we're in touch with the pulse of the community. You never have any doubt that your KUAM experience will be unmatched by any other media group on Guam or the region. This lineup is brought to you by IT&E, Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. The all-new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Enter ratings giant Standard & Poor's into the $67 million drama unfolding between Adeloupe and the legislature. Nestor Lacanto has our coverage. Plus, Crystal Paco gives you a first-hand look at the shutdown shuffling impacting public safety. And later, our Carmen Terlahi kicks off our Mess Chamorro series, Celebra y Chamorro. Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. The vote's in as Tom Adda approved to place the governor's bill to raise new revenue to cover a projected $67 million revenue shortfall in the voting file. Now, earlier there were multiple attempts to amend the measure, including a provision by Tommy Morrison to increase the business privilege tax from 4 to 5 percent instead of the 6 percent that Governor Eddie Calvo is seeking. The Morrison amendment failed, as did others by Senator Dennis Rodriguez Jr. to make deep personnel cuts at both the governor's office and the legislature. For the time being, an amendment by Senator Frank Lincoln Jr. to roll back the salaries of appointed officials to 2014 pre-competitive wage act levels did, in fact, pass. Again, that bill one success failed. The vote was uh, three, only three senators voted in support of passage, those senators being Tommy Morrison, um, Lu Luis Munoz, and Will Castro. All the other senators voted no to its passage, and Senator Speaker B.J. Cruz was excused. In the meantime, the governor passed something and I'll sign it. That's his new plea to lawmakers in the deepening financial crisis. Calvo's remarks come in the midst of a lingering stalemate between the administration and the legislature over how to dig the government out of a $67 million revenue hole created by federal tax reforms. Nestor Lacanto reports. The governor was not even very particular in what he was asking lawmakers to pass. Something, anything, just to get the revenue flowing as soon as possible. I'm going to sign whatever they send over. But I'm telling you, some of the, the lame-brained ideas, like 1% at 100 days, it doesn't change the fact, and I've told them, that I'm going to continue on the tough decisions that need to be made on cost cutting. What Calvo will not compromise on is his years-long crusade to fund the hospital. He is not willing to solve this new operational revenue crisis without also finding a fix for the perennial budget shortfalls at GMH. What more dire is a hospital? People live and die there within seconds or minutes. So no, I'm not going to separate the hospital and the fiscal crisis of this government. The hospital crisis has been there for years. We had a solution, and the legislature kicked the can down the road. In the meantime, the governor says he will continue with drastic austerity measures, such as laying off limited-term appointments and planning for furloughs. He also defended his order for 10% line agency-wide pro rata cuts that have come under heavy criticism because of the shutdowns of the Hagatnya police precinct and two fire stations. He says GFD chief Joey St. Nicholas, for example, had no other option but to cut back on traditionally heavy overtime hours. The only way to make the overtime cut 
is, was for him to cut on uh, stations. If you don't make the cuts, and we don't always make the cuts, then you looked at the March cash flow. Somebody, we're going to have a payless payday. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Laconcho. And your government's growing financial woes have now caught the attention of the international bond raging agency Standard & Poor's. It has placed a credit watch on about $187 million in bond debt. GITA Administrator Jay Rojas says none of the current bond issues will be impacted, but a ratings downgrade could raise the cost of future bond borrowing. The one thing that we're really concerned about is as we look at this new issuance for the port, um, when we do go out to the market for the port authority, um, we're going to have quite a few answers or quite a few questions that we're going to need to answer. In a news release, S&P says the credit watch follows the government's disclosure that its cash flow will be extremely constrained. It went in to say that if it doesn't receive evidence that the rating considerations are being addressed, it will likely lower the ratings. Last week we did actually speak with two rating agencies um, that did have questions just based on the current environment that's out there. Because as you know, there's been a lot of news about the governor trying to be able to fix this problem and the legislature not really reacting. They take a look at the numbers, they take a look at the current environment. Um, they have a much better overview as to what's happening in the market and with, with other municipalities that are out there. Um, what they do is what they do. The S&P statement was also critical of the government's financial position, which it described as weak. It went on to write that, quote, Guam has a history of structural imbalance in its general fund, including recurring deficits, a very large negative general fund balance, and massive long-term liabilities. Well, another news, not patrolling the streets as they normally do, but now patrolling the prison. Some 37 Guam Police Department officers previously detailed to the downtown precinct now are working alongside prison guards. Their new duties are part of the administration's cost-cutting measures. But how big are the savings? Crystal Paco sits down with DEPCOR Director Tony Lamarena to get some answers. How much savings is GovGuam realizing by removing GPD officers from the Hagatnya precinct to the prison? Do the math, and that's about $600,000. DEPCOR Director Tony Lamarana breaks down the figures. In the first quarter of fiscal year 2018, they've already accrued half a million dollars in overtime. That means a year's worth of overtime at DEPCOR alone will cost GovGuam upwards of $2 million. With GPD on prison grounds to supplement manpower, La Morena says they'll save about 40% in overtime costs for the remainder of the fiscal year. Budgeted by the legislature for this year, I believe um, it was about 940000 <clears throat> As of December, or excuse me, the first week of January pay period, uh, we have already expended more than half of that. So we're, we're talking three, not even four months into the fiscal year, and we've expended more than half of our overtime. But why so much overtime? In the past year, they've lost 33 prison guards to retirement, resignation, and termination. Their numbers are back up about 37 officers, thanks to a move by the Calvo administration over the weekend that shut down the Hagatnya precinct and assigned those GPD officers to the prison instead. As a result of that, our overtime has skyrocketed. And the governor realized that during uh, these trying times financially, uh, we had to curb our overtime. So by moving uh, manpower into DOC, that would assist us in, in curbing overtime. The transition not so simple, however. Lamarana reporting GPD officers can't work in direct contact with prisoners. We thank them for, for helping us uh, with our manpower shortage but we also have to take into consideration their safety. Uh, these are the very same individuals that arrested everyone that's confined here at DOC. So uh, we're trying as much as possible not to put them in harm's way. That leaves GPD officers to duties at the visitor center, the intake hub, perimeter watch, and transport, to name a few. Duties La Morena maintains are just as important as those in the facility. What we'll do then is pull back our DOC officers for filling those current uh, workloads and then moving them into the facility. So officers, our officers who work, for example, in the visitor center, will pull some of them back to work into the facility and then have GPD officers fill their gaps at the visitor center. On each shift, there will be seven to eight GPD officers working alongside prison guards on duty. We will have one officer from DOC there to oversee the, the GPD officers. 
and brief them on how the operations are done within, in those respective areas. Transport, for example, um, we have a DOC officer and a GPD officer uh, piggybacking on each other uh, for transport to the courts, medical runs, the psych runs, dental runs, and so forth. So rather than having two uh, DOC officers in that uh, transport run, we have one DOC officer, then we can move that one other one DOC officer back into the uh, complex, into ACF, where we need the manpower. According to La Marana, they have just over 200 prison guards. Ideally, they need 300 to operate at full staff. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Now it is worth mentioning that the prison was on lockdown today due to the fact that radio lines were down. Now guards, both prison and police officers, were allowed to use their mobile phones as a result. The lockdown, Director Lamarena reports, will be lifted once radio lines go back up, a matter that they're currently working on with iConnect. More news related to DEPCOR. Former officer Furman Maritita is being warned after he tested positive for smoking the drug ICE. The ex-corrections officer pleaded guilty to the charges against him in the major prison contraband investigation. Probation told the court today he's being given a warning because this is his first violation and because he admitted to using meth. Meritita, however, will be sanctioned if he fails another drug test. He, along with most of the others accused in the prison contraband scheme, were in superior court today. Trial setting for Meritita, along with former corrections officers Edward Chrysostomo, Frankie Roslin, Jeffrey Limo, and Jerome St. Nicholas, has been set for March 28th. A bench warrant for Liana Cabrera has been issued. Former officer Jerry Hokog is the only one one who had his case severed and will go to trial on September 10th. Others accused, Paul Johnson and his grandson, inmate Sean Paul Johnson, will also be back for a continued trial setting later this month. Ronald Menno, who pleaded guilty, is set to testify against the others, and his sentence has been converted to community service. The group was arrested in August and September of last year after investigators uncovered an elaborate scheme to smuggle drugs and other contraband into the Mingila facility. Elsewhere on island, two of the detainees accused in the deadly beating of detainee Edright Manson Isar have been appointed legal counsel. Albert Santos II and Jimmy Hadley appeared in court with the judge Anita Sokola appointing attorney Jay Ariola to represent Santos after his attorney, Donald Calvo, motioned to withdraw from the case. John Ramos will represent Hadley. The pair have since pleaded not guilty for their alleged part in the murder of Isar. They'll be back in court on the 14th. Day three of trial today for a couple accused of trying to smuggle eight pounds of meth from California to Guam in 2015. Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser are facing charges of conspiracy to distribute and possession with the intent to distribute the drug ICE. Federal Prosecutor John Black calling his next witness, DEA senior forensic chemist Michael Brousseau. He, along with others, analyzed and tested the drugs seized. Defense attorney picked at the expert witness qualifications and questioned him about the chain of custody of the drugs prior to his inspection. He testified that the packaging and markings have not changed since he last saw the evidence. Trial continues tomorrow. Please stay tuned. We are back right after this. And coming up, multiple Saipan contractors will have to pay millions for federal violations related to the construction of the casino in Saipan. That and more on the way. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Of the day, I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. This is Pollock, and this is Pollock, but they're totally different. One is Pollock, South Dakota, and the other is real wild-caught Alaska Pollock from a certified sustainable fishery. And that's the Pollock you'll find in the McDonald's filet of fish So, no matter where you are, you can always get real fish caught sustainably from here. So let's review. This is that one place called Pollock, this is real wild-caught Alaska Pollock, and this is who can bring it all together, sourced from a sustainable fishery. And it's delicious. 
Dodge Plus and Mighty has the trucks. And during Ram Truck Month, save up to $97.50 on new Ram trucks. Cars Plus has a great selection of 2018 Ram trucks. Plus, shop our remaining 2017 Ram 1500s. Voted Guam's best truck two years in a row. The Ram truck comes with a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warrant. And with 1.99 APR financing for qualified buyers, there's no better time to buy than now. It's Ram Truck Month, and only Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. Cars Plus, driven by you. More ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Welcome back, everybody, to Primetime. Island mayors met with the governor today trying to come up with a solution to put on this year's Liberation Carnival. The island's municipal leaders have been stuck trying to get interested vendors a way to fund the event, and they even want to revisit the idea of allowing games of chance just for this once-a-year activity. I told them I'll try to work with them, and I'll, go, I'll be agreeable to a solution for the carnival, but I said, hey, right now that would be like rearranging the deck chairs in the Titanic. Mm -hmm. We could fix something here, we could fix something there, but we have this major fiscal crisis. Senator Talina Nelson passed a introduced the measure, I should say, that was passed and then became law. The discussion on what to do next is ongoing. Questions of overbilling and unauthorized charges were some of the findings in the latest OPA audit of the Guam Transit Authority. The GRTA disagreeing with the findings at an oversight hearing senators questioned management who lacked the documentation for the procurement process. Senator Regine Bisco Lee. Mr. Augustine, you said that you sat down with the vendor and you discussed these overpayments. When, when did you do that? When did you know that you were being overcharged? When my when was the first instance, and when was the first I, meeting I, that you I, had? I do not recall the exact date, Senator, but when we do get a, a this billing, seems to be a chronic problem. There's no documentation on your part of instances when something comes up. There's no documentation. You don't know the dates when you discovered these things. You don't know when you met with them. So it's really difficult for us to have faith in your management. Testimony from writers also said they want management changed and a new contract. Senators wanting answers that government procedures are followed. I'll get back to Guam news in just a moment. Before China-based construction contractors will have to pay almost $14 million due to thousands of Chinese employees working on the Saipan Casino and Hotel. The settlement's a result of an investigation by the U.S. Department of Labor finding the foreign-based contractors paid their workforce less than the minimum wage and overtime pay required by the Fair Labor Standards Act. The contractors were identified as MCC International Saipan, Belidia New Material System Engineering, Gold Mantis Construction Decoration, and Sino Great Wall International Engineering. A memorial mass will be held locally for Bishop Tomas Camacho, who passed away this past Monday. The mass will be held at the cathedral Wednesday, March 13th at 11 in the morning. Now, this is the same time a mass will be held in Saipan. Bishop Camacho served in the Marianas for 56 years. He served many years as a priest here on island, and he was also named a Monsignor. He was 84 years old. Well, finally, some good news this evening as our island has declared a win as GVB announced that Guam recently took home the award for Best Booth Performance at the 25th Philippine Travel Agencies Association Travel Tour Expo. It's a long name, but very, very cool honor. The event was held last month at the SMX Convention Center in Manila. The Guam booth included entertainment from Jesse and Ruby, as well as the Guam Half a Day Cultural Show, and appearances from Miss Guam Earth, Emma Mae Shidi. It's estimated that about 2,000 people checked out the Guam booths each day. It also included a virtual reality room to provide consumers with a first-hand experience of our community. Congratulations, that is Great awesome. Job. Sports and weather coming up next, plus a little later we'll have our special month long series, Celebra y Chamorro.
Binging movies in bed shouldn't make you want to hide under the covers when the bill arrives. That's why all of GTA's home internet plans are unlimited. We believe that you deserve better than home internet with hidden data fees. Because you should be able to cuddle without worrying about bill trouble. So the choice is yours. Bill shock with the other guys or a life unlimited with GTA. Say goodbye to hidden data fees and make the switch today to GTA. Your island, your network. The Down Syndrome Association of Guam exists to support families of individuals with Down Syndrome. We're a group of parents who have children with Down Syndrome and know the joys and challenges of raising them. For more information about the health, development, and education of a child or adult with Down Syndrome, please contact Vicki Ariola at 472-6114. At Island Cancer Center, we treat our patients and their families like our family. We have all been touched by cancer, and it is important to feel comfortable and secure under the care of our health professionals. You can count on us for skilled cancer specialists, the most advanced cancer-fighting technology on the island, and a commitment to caring for you or your loved one with compassion, respect, and empathy. Our family, treating your family. Island Cancer Center, located on Guam Medical Plaza. Visit us at islandcancercenter.com or call 646-3363. In every community, there's a heartbeat. A rhythm. A collective vibration. It resonates through our villages. Our job is to connect with that heartbeat, to respond and engage. to respect our cultural institutions, but also to embrace what's new. It's our job to stay connected, to stay in touch, so no matter how you receive us and what you turn to us for, breaking news, important advisories, interesting stories, to get a good laugh, a good cry, or figure out where to eat, drink, shop, or play, we're in touch with the pulse of the community. You never have any doubt that your KUAM experience will be unmatched by any other media group on Guam or the region. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We get the show started tonight with some Running footage from the Rainbows for All Children 5K that was held at the Micronesia Mall. Check it out. Hundreds of runners came out in support of the 30th annual Rainbows for All Children 3.5 mile run walk. A Zumba warm up was held before the race to get the blood flowing and help wake up the participants. The race started and ended at the Micronesia Mall. This year's course was different than all of the previous runs because of the road construction heading northbound. Rainbows is an international not-for-profit research-based peer support group for children, adolescents, and adults going through life-altering crisis or experiencing a loss of a significant loved one. Rainbows does not get local or federal funds. Their existence is based solely on private and public partnerships with Guam's entrepreneurs, organizations, and individuals who would like to make a difference in the life of our youth. All children participating in Rainbows are free of charge. Rainbows for All Children Guam has helped over 12,500 children since 1987. Track and field athletes from Guam, Saipan, Chuk, and Pompeii competed in sprint races at the Ukudu High School. The annual Friendship Invitational was held by the FAS Athletic Organization. The annual competition is used to promote friendship and unity within our community. Opening ceremonies for the event were held at the Guam Sports Complex in Dedido. Volleyball was also on the list of events for men and women's teams. Semifinals and championship matches were played at the UOG Cabo Fieldhouse. The FAS Athletic Organization is a youth sports organization whose goal is to use sports as a platform to encourage a productive and responsible youth within the FSM community of Guam. Guahan Varsity Football League from Eagles Field in Mingilao. The Outlaws and Cowboys suiting up in the second game of the day. Ben Whitaker gets picked off here by Larry Saralu, who picks up a chunk of yards before being tackled by Justin the Shocker Cruz. Cowboys didn't have any luck on offense after gaining possession. 
The Outlaws defense comes up with the tackle for a loss. Bubba O'Malley sliding down the line to get the stop on the running back. The defense swallowing up the fullback again for no gain on the carry. Outlaws closing shop on the Cowboys offense. Running back Jacob Flores was the workhorse in the running game. First down run keeps the drive alive for the Outlaws. Flores gets the call again and follows his lead block into the end zone for the touchdown. Flores would add another rushing touchdown before halftime to go up 14-0. The Outlaws get the shutout win 44-0. Another defensive stop, interception, as the Cowboys QB try to hit his tight end on a quick pot pass. No mas. In bowling news, 15-year-old Jeremiah Camacho averaged a 232 throughout the Triple J Guam Youth Bowler of the Month Championship to claim his first title of the year. Noah Timonglow finished second, 58 pins adrift, followed by Jaceline Espiritu and Mary Grace Hernandez, who qualified for the stepladder elimination format. Camacho's 232 game against Timonglow's 216 was good enough for the title. The next Triple J Guam Youth Bowler of the Month will be held on Sunday, April 8th at 11 in the morning at the Central Lanes Bowling Center. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Guam is more than a tiny island in the Pacific. This magical place is where I call home. This island inspires me to learn and explore what's around me. It teaches me that there are no shortcuts in life and that the long way home may just be the scenic route. And that even the dirt roads can lead you to beautiful destinations. In every community, there's a heartbeat, a rhythm, a collective vibration. It resonates through our villages. Our job is to connect with that heartbeat, to respond and engage, to respect our cultural institutions, but also to embrace what's new. It's our job to stay connected, to stay in touch, so no matter how you receive us and what you turn to us for, breaking news, important advisories, interesting stories, to get a good laugh, a good cry, or figure out where to eat, drink, shop, or play, we're in touch with the pulse of the community. You never have any doubt that your KUAM experience will be unmatched by any other media group on Guam or the region. Welcome back. Viva Mess Tomorrow. We here at KUAM take pride in the local culture. And for Mess Tomorrow, we will put our team to the test. We are celebrating the history and culture by showing you the traditional ways of our ancestors. It is the premiere edition of our weekly special, Celebrate Eat Tomorrow. Our Carmen Chalahi kicks things off by speaking with one woman who shares her love for the ancient art of weaving. It's with patience and skill, and each leaf she weaves. GW High School teacher Martha Tenorio 
does her part to keep the Chamorro spirit alive. As a child, what drew me to it was just the whole creativeness of it. Like, you know, you take something like this and, you know, you can create grasshoppers or birds or katupas or baskets or hat. And that was a lot of fun for me. We spent an afternoon with Martha learning her favorite traditional style of weaving, a katsupa. As a little girl, I remember sitting uh, on the floor of the outside kitchen while my mom and my grandmother would be weaving katupas for the fiesta table. What they would do is they'll make these little baskets uh, to put the rice in. And the great thing about the katupa is that it maintains the freshness of the rice where you know it doesn't get mahangy. Uh, for up to like seven days. In the old Chamorro tradition, hunters, fishermen, and those traveling between villages would carry the katsupa as packed lunch. But weaving had many other traditional forms for in and outside the home. The guagua, the different kinds of baskets, uh, whether it's for uh, putting food in on the table or when they're out hunting or fishing. Again, <laughs> uh, they can put, you know, whatever the fish or the whatever things they're uh, harvesting from the jungle. Uh, third one would be the thatch roofing as well. So the higai would be the when they weave the leaves and they would use that for the thatch roof. This knowledge of weaving passed down by our Sina, she hopes to teach her students. When I'm weaving something, I'm right back at of being that child with my mom and my grandmother and watching them weave and my grandfather. But the other thing that weaving does is it really does connect us straight to our heritage because we are doing the exact same weavings that our ancestors did. You know, when, we, when I weave a katupa, that's the same katupa that they were weaving. When I weave the guagua, that was their guagua and even the thatch roof. And so by weaving, we are, con we are perpetuating this knowledge that our sinus have passed down to us. And that's something that belongs to all of us. It is our heritage. A heritage we are proud to be a part of. So using the technique Martha showed us, I tried my hand at weaving. And well, in the end, in celebration of Mes Chamorro, Guahusi Carmen Victoria Trilahi. Are you good at Chamorro weaving? No. It's it's hard. It is a lot harder than it looks. And Carmen did a fantastic job. And we'll have these kind of special stories all throughout Miss Tomorrow. And before we wrap up the news, here's your latest round of birthday shout outs. We are wishing happy birthday to two very special Guamanians tonight. AJ Sablan, shout out from the whole Mangapa clan, wishing you a happy blessed birthday. We love you, they say. And happy birthday number nine to Mike Jr. Guzman. This is MJ. Love always from Mom, Dad, Chrissy, Matt Matt, Ethan, and Shay. Happy buddy, ev happy birthday, everybody. Happy buddy. Yeah, happy buddy. <laughs> happy you buddy. are you, well, you are a buddy if you're part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. And to become a buddy, I'm saving myself right now. You can go to KUAM.com and maybe Carmen will make you like a little katupak that you can put on your birthday cake if you win it. <laughs> Well, speaking of Carmen, Rice she's, goes good with ice cream she's cream. up next with Health, Home, and Lifestyle. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E.